Welcome back. You're still watching Smart Money on CNBC TV 18. We're talking about the big investment themes that you can look at in 2023. We're done with three themes and now let's move forward. Tridip Bhattacharya, the CIO of Equities at Edelweiss AMC, is our guest. Uh, Tridip, the next theme is global market share gainers. And this is very interesting because there's now, I mean, not just China plus one, but Europe plus one as well. And a lot of Indian companies are big beneficiaries of that. India has sort of become the global export hub in the sense in men, across many industries. So tell us about the big beneficiaries of this theme. I think, uh, uh, as you as you rightly said, the context uh, over the last couple of years, given the geopolitical situation as it turned out to be with regards to China-U.S. relations and also Russia-Ukraine war, um, I think what the global outsourcers have generally come into a view that we, apart from just the lowest cost producer, we do need reliability of supply, particularly when uh, uh, macro conditions turn a little volatile, stroke hostile. And in that context, uh, keeping scale in mind, India emerges as one of the alternatives, particularly to high outsourcing destinations like that of China. And certain subsegments like chemicals, et cetera, uh, IT services, anyways, um, uh, form an incredible alternative to, to Chinese suppliers because we do have suppliers uh, that can supply the same sort of products from here. Uh, may not be as competitive as that of China, but overall from a growth standpoint or from a value add standpoint, equally keen and equally capable. Uh, keeping this in mind, what used to be China plus one about two to three years ago has now become Europe plus one uh, as a theme. Now, there is a bit of a difference between the two. While China plus one is a good top line opportunity, Europe plus one could be a strong margin opportunity for Indian players as well, because clearly the cost takeout uh, once a manufacturer locates or uh, relocates from, you know, from Europe to India is quite significant. Um, and hence, in that context, uh, what turned out to be a top line opportunity to start with in the form of China plus one, uh, including Europe, uh, now becomes basically a revenue as well as a good margin opportunity. So we are uh, over these, uh, uh, this particular theme in our portfolio, um, and we think that this could be a strong area to go for, particularly uh, after having seen some of the worst cyclical days uh, 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 in the globe as we head into 2023, and some parts of Europe and US recover, you could see some buoyancy coming about in these sectors as well. So it is also a play on cyclical global recovery, also, if uh, uh, the fact that structurally market share moving from China towards India could be a strong profitable opportunity as well. Oh, absolutely. And also now with the whole COVID situation blowing up in China once again, uh, there will once again be more opportunities, unfortunately, more opportunities for markets like India. I say unfortunate because nobody wants this kind of COVID situation, right, uh, across China. I mean, it's been absolutely. the worst that uh, China has seen throughout the pandemic. But does that also put at risk some of these companies that get their raw materials from China? Because I was going through your list, uh, the beneficiaries of the China Europe plus one demand are, you know, names like PI Industries, Tata Chemicals, JB Chemicals. These are stocks that you have in your mid-cap fund. Uh, so I ask you, is there any risk to their growth because of perhaps a supply constraint in China uh, because of what's happening there? I think well spotted. I would say that uh, uh, for better part of 2022, they faced the supply challenges and that impacted uh, their margins overall. Uh, 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 if you look at particularly in the first half of fiscal 2023, 20, uh, which is why I said as we get into calendar 23, which is the next year, um, and the supply, some of these supply challenges ease as much as uh, uh, they had gone up in the past, actually more so driven not just by the Chinese condition, but also Russia-Ukraine war, um, they can get a, a bit of a uh, sort of uh, stability from a margin standpoint. And if the top line continues to be buoyant, you could, you have a strong top line as well as uh, earnings growth opportunity. But yes, given that some of the inputs uh, that these companies use are global commodities, uh, they are at risk usually with regards to when uh, to those times when commodity prices go up. My only point is that given where we have seen commodity prices in the light of supply chain challenges, particularly in the first half of 2022, um, the year that lies ahead hopefully would be better than what we were before and hence better times for these companies. Okay, so that's the fourth theme, the global market share gainers. Let's move on to the fifth theme now, uh, which is beneficiaries of the government growth schemes. Now, this is interesting because uh, the only sector that really stood out this year in that sense, uh, which was a big beneficiary of government growth schemes, was defence. 
and some of these stocks feature on your list as well. My question to you is, is it a sector that is juiced out completely or do you think that there could be more to go? I think these, uh, 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 basically, if I were to sum this up uh, in the form of domestic, uh, purely idiosyncratic uh, themes which are only applicable to India, makes the India story relatively unique in comparison with some of the other countries or emerging markets that you deal with. And in that, indigenization of defense is a strong theme as much as a PLI beneficiary being the other one. Um, these are the two that I would name. Um, and these are very unique to India in the way it is going about uh, to, you talked about uh, defense. So let me say that while the India defense opportunity will pro is looking to grow at about 20% as a headline opportunity over the next 10 years, that's what the government plan is. On top of that, the indigenization would lead to uh, uh, superior growth as well on top of uh, the uh, macro opportunity. But if you look at some of the valuations of the stocks that are trading today in India, they are trading at similar valuations as some of the global defense manufacturers. So this is one pocket, maybe because of the PSU nature of it. But overall, while the growth rates would continue to be strong and they will have strong tailwinds, the valuations yet are not maxed out. And hence we see, along with earnings growth, um, uh, stability in valuations as one of the factors that will play out in this company's favor over the medium term, uh, 2023 being a good starting point with regards to the same. Okay. Now, you know what? The uh, common question that I get asked by a lot of viewers is that if one wants to capture all these big themes through the mutual fund route and an investor has no time to individually research stocks, what are the funds that I can look at? Now, you've consolidated five themes for us. You manage the mid-cap fund. Uh, does that have, you know, um, a sort of a cocktail of these stocks in it? And if you can just tell us, what, are they, what is the average return that one can look at, say, over the next three to five years? <laughs> that will be putting myself on a tough spot. But I would say that investors today have a, a, a wide range of choices, uh, amongst which one of the things that I strong, feel strongly and passionate about is obviously the fund that I run. Um, and the areas that we discussed are the areas that we are overweight in, particularly in the Edelweiss Metcalf Fund. I would just put the credentials in front of the investors and uh, they can judge for themselves. I would say that overall, um, uh, the, the fund size is still at a level where we can get uh, 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 reasonable size positions with regards to the stocks that we want to own without hampering liquidity. Second, this fund has almost a 15-year track record, makes it one of the longest uh, mid-cap funds which are there or thereabouts in the horizon. And third, the themes that we talked about are adequately represented in, uh, in this fund in a meaningful way. So uh, those would be the three things that I would like to kind of you know talk about in the context of the Edelweiss Metcalf Fund. Um, if that catch if that catches interest, uh, uh, you know I leave that to the investor the investor to make the better decision. Okay. In fact, I think we have a plate on what the Edelweiss Metcalf Fund has done in terms of returns over the last three years, over the last five years as well. Uh, here you have it. This is the size of the fund. It's almost 2,500 crores. A three-year return of the Edelweiss Midcap Fund has been about 26%, while a five-year return has been 13.3%. So if you are looking to get better returns, it's not just this fund, but investing in any mid-cap fund will perhaps give you more aggressive. The risk is higher, but the returns are higher as well. Tradeep, just to wrap up, in the last 10 years, the investment strategy has changed drastically. Uh, you know, earlier it was just hold and forget, but now there are trends that are emerging and getting over in a span of months. What can you expect in the next one year? I would actually uh, uh, take, it's a great question uh, to sum it up. And I would uh, say something like this. Over the last 10 years, we have been dealing with a situation where interest rates have been falling, inflation, inflation has been falling, and we have been dealing with a globally synchronized capitalistic world. Over the next 10 years, we will have to deal with probably a situation where interest rate might be rising on the back of the fact that inflation might be a little more sticky um, than what earlier the case used to be. Uh, in such circumstances, the investment style that works might actually be a little different from what it used to work over the last 10 years. For instance, what I'm talking about maybe that you know, while we were used to PE re-rating as a common theme over the last three, five years, maybe going forward, earnings growth will have to take precedence and overall PE, uh, we have to contend with a little bit of PE de-rating uh, in the process of making the investor uh, returns over a period of next two to three years. That's one. 
Second, I would say that country-specific dynamics become a lot more important rather than synchronous movements like what we've been seeing over the last three, five years in equity markets globally. Um, I think this is where some of the themes that we talked about, which are very specific to India, becomes uh, or comes to central stage and will hold out uh, uh, true for, uh, for India overall. Sure. So given all this in mind, the bottom of stock picking is the way to go about it. Earnings growth is the way to sort of, you know, uh, 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 plant your bets. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, those would be the, some of the changes that I would suspect uh, would come about in investment style. And, uh, 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 you know, there you go. Well, thanks a lot, Tridip, for that. And thanks for kickstarting 2023 with a bang with all the big investment ideas to watch out for. But as always, we don't end the show without a financial tip of the week. And this time it's on mutual funds. Now, do you know what is a direct plan? One may invest in mutual funds directly, that is without involving or routing the investment through any distributor or agent in what is called a direct plan. Or you may choose to invest in a mutual fund with the help of a mutual fund distributor or agent and that's called a regular plan. Now direct plans and regular plans are both parts of the same mutual fund scheme. They have the same common portfolio and are managed by the same fund manager but they have different expense ratios which is basically recurring expenses that is incurred by the mutual fund scheme. So a direct plan has lower expense ratios than the regular plan and there's no distributor or agent involved. Hence, there is savings in terms of distribution costs, commissions paid out to the distributor and the agent, which is then added back to the returns of the scheme. Hence, a direct plan has a separate NAV which is higher than the regular plan's NAV. In due course, the lower expense ratio of direct plans translates into higher return on investments which keeps compounding over the year. Thus, the investment in direct plan would be worth more over a period in comparison to investing in regular plans of the same scheme. Well, with that, it's curtains down on this edition of Smart Money. Thanks a lot for watching.